You finally get your classic car all together. You think you're done. You're doing some test driving, have some fun with it. And something like this happens here. Now at this point, that noise, I've never heard that before. I've never seen that before. And I really have no idea where to start. Um, it had a little bit of a speedometer noise before I took the cluster back out to fix the amp meter. So I'm going to su suspect there's something wrong with either the speedometer itself or the cable that drives it. So I guess we're going to jump into this today, try to figure out what the heck that noise is, why this car is possessed by demons, and we're going to see if we can vanquish those demons and make this bird fly nice and quiet again. Because I actually drove by the golf course that went down into that. I swear that guy thought he was going to jump over the fence and punch me out because of the noise it was making. So I need to figure this thing out. Not sure if anybody else has ever experienced this problem before. Let me know in the comments because this is a first for me. But we're going to see if we can't isolate, find, and repair the screaming speedometer on the screaming chicken. Okay, so where do we start? Well, let's start by here. Like I said, it only started making more noise as we're moving the speedometer head. So I guess first I'm going to inspect the speedometer cable itself. It pokes through the firewall right here by our fuse panel and should make a nice clean straight shot up there into the back side of the cluster. Now there's wiring and everything up in here. It's kind of hard to tell, but that actually looks nice and straight. So I don't think I've kinked or damaged the cable during the removal or installation. So I'm probably gonna end up taking the cluster back out of this car again. But I think first thing we're gonna do to start with is go underneath the car, I'm gonna jack it up, undo the speedometer cable from the rear of the tail shaft of the transmission, and just give this speedometer cable a little twist and to see how much drag or does the needle move or bounce and get an idea maybe which way it goes. Right. Got the car all lifted up. We got a jack stand under the front of it up there. So we're gonna climb underneath here and here's what we're talking about, the speedo cable right here in the tail shaft or the output end of the transmission. Now it should be as simple as I'm screw this right here and then pull this out. And this is our speedometer cable. This goes up to our speedometer head. Now, spitting that, huh, I don't know what's normal, but that actually feels pretty tight. I actually don't think you get the camera to focus. It almost feels like it wants to bounce back a little bit. You can see here, I'll turn it this way. You see it actually springs back. So I think I need to pull the cable out of the car and inspect it. Maybe it's kinked or bound up, or maybe it just needs cleaned and lubed. So next step is back inside the car, pull the other end off the speedometer head, and let's pull this cable out. Now, before I go through all the trouble pulling the whole cable housing out, I'm going to try to unscrew it from just the back of the speedometer and do that again. Give it a twist and see if it feels any better or any different. I'm not sure how good I can get my hand in here. It's a pretty tight fit. Yeah, that's a big no. I'm going to have to pull the cluster out of this car, so that's not too overly complicated. Take your steering column cover here off. One, two, three, four screws on that. Two halves fall out of the way couple screws in the bottom three across the top and then you actually drop those three nuts on the steering column bring it down just a little bit and you can wrestle that cluster out so i'm going to get that pulled out of the way keep working on the speedometer Okay, now, back here on the back side, I'm gonna do the speedometer cable now from the speedo head. And, go. Huh, now that cable now spins really easily. I think we need to pull this back out and take a look at the back side of the inside of the speedometer, unfortunately. Okay. Got the cluster back out. Like I said, I gave the speedometer cable here a little twist and a whirl, and I can pull this thing. It's smooth, nice, easy moving. Don't think our problem is there. When we grab the speedometer drive here on the back of our cluster, I'm trying to turn this. It's actually relatively snug and tight. Um, 
Now, what do I have to compare it to? Well, I actually have the original cluster that came out of this car because this car wasn't originally equipped with rally gauges. Uh, I can go grab the original cluster and kind of give me a feel for the drag on it versus this, but I can tell you right now, this feels pretty tight. Okay, original cluster. This is our rally gauge cluster. Now, give this here a little whirl there, turn. I mean, you can almost just take your fingertip and just actually just drag your finger across it and it'll actually spin. This side here, no, you actually have to grab with both fingers to get it to turn. Now, I know you can't really judge that by what I'm trying to tell you on the video for feel, but let's just say you had a brand new nut and a quarter, say a quarter inch, quarter 20 nut and a bolt, not locking, but regular nut, and it would spin the nut down on the threads. That's about what the drag is on this. Now, this here, well, it feels like a popsicle stick in the mud. Uh, there's quite a bit of drag. So I think we need to take this apart, see if we can clean it up. It's not binding like a sticking gear or something jammed up in it, but it's just... It's really gummy, so maybe some old grease, maybe we can flush it out. So I'm gonna work on taking this all back apart and get the speedometer out of this, see what we can do. Okay, pull the cluster assembly, all of this comes apart. There's only the two bolts that go here and here that holds the speedometer head and the cluster itself. Now I'm gonna tell you what, this thing just doesn't feel right whatsoever. Um, I'm not quite sure how to flush it out. I think any chemicals like brake clean would probably dissolve the numbers off of our odometer. I don't think I wanna do that. Uh, maybe rubbing alcohol. So I'm going to see what I can find in the medicine cabinet in the house. Maybe some alcohol and let it soak into here around where that shaft goes through um, and see if we can't get that thing to flush out because this it's just really tight. I'm going to say it's probably my problem. So need to find a way to flush this thing out. I don't want to take it apart and pull the needle off because I'm messed with the calibration of the speedometer. So I don't know. We'll see what I can find here in the house to get that thing cleaned up. So ultimately, in the end, that is WD-40 in a recycled spray bottle because it's cheaper by the gallon. I soaked that thing through. You can actually see it looks like a bright brass and copper color again. Um, kept using that and flushing air through it, flushing it out, flushing it out, flushing it out, all kinds of black sludge, which is probably the old grease and just material. Finally got it flushed out. It spins pretty easily, and it actually cleaned up to shine up the numbers quite a bit, too. And it did not dissolve the numbers. So WD-40 will definitely flush it out. Now I gotta find some like oil of some court, really light oil. I can kind of just put a couple drops there on the end of it. So this is lubricated. And I think what I'm gonna do is maybe just go ahead and slide this back in and hook the cable to it and not put the whole clutch because let's shove this in the dash and go for a drive and see if this thing's a whole lot quieter. Okay, a new and improved, hopefully quieted down speedometer head. Well, just kind of slide this thing into the dash. I'll just get that cable put in the backside and tuck it up in there. And I'll go for a quick little ride. Okay, moment of truth, right? Let's go for a drive. And hit 45 mile an hour and see what it does. So far it's quieter and the needle's not bouncing. And we've got 45 and 50 and we ain't screaming like a banshee no more. So I think we've got this thing solved, but unfortunately we gotta put this dash all back together. But I think that was our problem, a sticky speedometer head flushing it out definitely a lot better than it was. Hey, so there you have it. No more screaming chicken. The speedo noise fixed that with a little bit of basically flushing out with the WD-40. Work good. And I didn't show it in the video because I forgot to. Marvel Mr. Oil, a few little drops on that. Gave it a couple spins. That thing moves really nice now. And as you can tell, it went for a drive. Nice and quiet. Needle bounces ever so slightly, but it's an old mechanical speedometer. It's not screaming at me and it's relatively accurate. So we're going to call that good. So we're going to mark off Speedo noise off of my list. That was the list I was compiling. I only had a few things, but as I was going through test drives looking at it, I added a few. But going down to now is the driver's side rocker trim. It's on back order. Should be here at the end of this month. A couple screws, five minute fix, and the old glove box slide. I'll probably just knock that out. It's pretty self explanatory. Needs new end crimped on and put a bulb in it. So, but that tells us though, this car is just about done. So, you want to know exactly how much we spent on the old great pumpkin to get it look like this in our two car garage here at home doing basically 99.9% .9 of the work. Well, that's what I'm about to show you on the next video after this here. We're going to give you a whole, I guess a big old lump sum price, give you one good, I guess, last walk around the great pumpkin, one heck of a fun maybe test drive, drag you guys along and then show you exactly how much we spent to build this car here in the garage. I hope you guys appreciate what we've shown, what you've learned, or maybe, you know, how not to do it, I like to say. But we definitely had a lot of fun bringing this car back and bring it to its, well, basically former glory, or maybe a little better. Uh, a few custom touches you guys saw on the way, but rust repair, paint, interior, suspension, brake upgrades, everything was done here on this car. And if you guys have watched from the very beginning, you know what it took to get here, and it's been a whole lot of fun. But that doesn't mean the Vinyl Village Garage is going to shut its door. It doesn't mean we're done. I have another project coming in. And unfortunately, it's not going to be finishing the high school car yet again because it's a perfect workbench. I hate to give that up. 
I know you guys give me hell for that, but uh, limited space, what you do. And I'm not gonna do nothing with the Trans Marado. I have a different car be heading our way. I actually used to own this car. It's gonna come back for a victory lap. We're gonna do a lot of really cool stuff to it too. So plenty more footage, plenty more bird stuff heading in your direction. So appreciate you following me on the journey of the Great Pumpkin. We're gonna show you what we're gonna be popping up here next and hope you guys continue to follow us on building these cars here in the old Vinyl Village garage. So appreciate that. And of course, thanks for subscribing, liking, making comments and sharing with their friends. This has made this thing a whole lot more enjoyable. I love building these cars, love sharing with you. Now being the YouTube journey has been really cool added twist to like this is my, what I do. So it's kind of fun and hope you guys get something out of just the same. So nonetheless, we'll get the new project in here, get to this last video down on this one, and I hope to see you then.